This is a video on the SOCA-TOA rules, the trigonometric ratios they can be called, but you will know it is just SOCA-TOA, and you may have a sentence to remember it. But what does it mean? Well, so SOH means the sine of some angle theta is equal to the opposite over the hypotenuse. Then C for cosine of some angle is equal to the adjacent over hypotenuse. And then T stands for tan and it says stands for the opposite over the adjacent. Now what's super important here, and you cannot forget this, these formulas only work with right angle triangles. Now, how do you know what it means by adjacent and opposite and which is which? Well, this is the most common mistake I see in exams and in class tests, is this. So we have a right angle triangle. Right angle mean it denotes a right angle in the corner. It can be this corner symbol like this here, or a 90 degree can be just marked there. The hypotenuse is always the longest side you are taught of a right angle triangle. It's always the side across from the 90 degree angle. So the hypotenuse will never change, but these are interchangeable as adjacent and opposite sides depending on what angle you're using. So I've tried to use colors to help clarify it here. So if I'm using the angle A here, the opposite side is the side literally opposite it, which is this side down here. And the adjacent side is the side attached to it. If I'm using angle B, the opposite side again is now over here and the adjacent side is the side attached to it. So one more time, if we're using this angle up here, this side is the opposite. But if you're using this ang angle here, this side is the opposite. So try and see that from the colors. We're gonna look at two quick examples. One where we're looking for the length of a side and one is where we're looking for an angle. Now when we're looking for an angle, we do go to what's called sine inverse and cos inverse and stuff like that. But I'll show you to that on a calculator. So now, looking at like some examples here, what are we looking at? So we have a right angle triangle here. We can see clearly the symbols in the corner for 90 degrees. So what do we have? So we're looking for this side x. Now looking at the angle we have, we can see that x is the opposite side. 10, you should see now, is the hypotenuse, which is the longest side across from the right angle. So we have to use an opposite side formula that also includes a hypotenuse. When we look at our rules, we can see that which one uses opposite and hypotenuse? It's sine here. So we know we have to use the sine formula. So that's where it says that the sine of theta is equal to opposite over hypotenuse. Okay, so let's put in what we have. So our angle is 40 degrees, so that's the sine of 40 degrees, and our opposite side is x, and our hypotenuse is 10. Now using the rules of maybe cross multiplication or whatever you like, multiplying across by 10, we can just like move this 10 up in front of the sine here. So that goes 10 sine of 40 degrees equals to x. Now we put that into our calculator, we can put it in literally like that, make sure your calculator is in degrees, because we're using degrees in our angle, 10 sine and 40, and I get 6.43 if I round it up. So 6.43 should be equal to x, and that's the first one done. Now look at the next triangle, and see what we have. So again, it's a right angle triangle, we can see the 90 degree symbol here in the corner. Now. We can't use 90 degrees in our formula. You would never do that, okay? Just be careful there. Never put the 90 degrees in. So this is the angle we have, and what sides do we have? So we can see the side we're looking for x would be the hypotenuse. So this is the hypotenuse over here. What's this side in relation to the 30 degree angle we have to use? Well, it's not the opposite, so it must be the adjacent. So again, we will look at our sheet and see which formula uses adjacent and hypotenuse, and we can see that it's the cosine angle. So. We could say the cosine of theta is equal to adjacent over hypotenuse. Let's fill in what we have. Remember, we're using the 30 degrees. The cos of 30 degrees, the adjacent side, that's 11. And the hypotenuse is x. Now, a small bit of rearranging here. There is a thing called cross multiplication. We, we do, it's a bit of a pitfall in maths, and it can be a problem. So you mightn't see a lot of people teaching it, but we can use it here. So where the x can go is up this way, and we have to get x on its own, but he has to be on top. He can't go up there, he has to come across through the equals, if you like. So x can come over here, and we'll have it in front of cos of 30 degrees and equals to 11. Now we don't want, we want x on his own, so where can cos of 30 go? Well he can't go just magically disappear over to here, he has to go underneath 11 over there. So x now is equal to 11 over cos of 30.
Now I'll do a, a quick video at some stage on cross multiplication just to remind you of that and show you where the pitfalls are but for now we can use it. So we have to put x is equal to 11 over cos of 30 so I'll hit my fraction button and put 11 over cos of 30 equals and I get this stuff here, let's change it to decimal, I get 12.7 so x is 12.7 to one decimal place. Now on to the next uh, two examples here and, and let's look and see what's different about those. Well, we're looking for an angle so it's, it's slightly different, okay? So let's see what angle we're looking for. So again, we definitely have a right angle triangle, yep. Here's the angle we are looking for. What two sides have we got? Well, we have the opposite side and we have the hypotenuse, which is always the longest side. So we have the opposite and we have the hypotenuse. Which one of those going to be? So which one uses opposite hypotenuse? We see it's sine. So this is going to be a sine problem. So the sine of some angle is equal to opposite over hypotenuse. Okay, so what are we talking about? Well, x is the angle. So we have to replace theta by x. The opposite is 8. The hypotenuse is 12. Now, here's the big step that you have to do. So what's going to happen here? We want to get x on its own because we're looking for x. We're looking for the sine of x. We're looking for x. To get rid of sine here, we must say this, right? So big step here. Keep x there, and if you want to bring across sine, you call the sine inverse. So it's a x different little button on your calculator. Well, it's the sine button, but you have to press shift before you press it. So if sine of x is equal to 8 over 12, and we want x on its own, you get sine inverse of 8 over 12. You would never get the sine inverse of an angle. You'd never put a degree number in there. It has to be side, uh, side lengths in there. So remember, this step is something you're going to have to remember when you're looking for angles, right? So let's do that. So x is equal to... Now, sine inverse button, where's that? Well, we can see the sine button is here. And if we look above that, we see the sine inverse symbol. So we'll go shift and sine, sine inverse and then in our brackets we'll put 8 over 12 close the bracket and equals and we get 41.81 and of course that is an angle so our symbol our unit is degrees if you like right okay so one more example so again let's look at the angle we have it's definitely a, a right angle triangle so now we don't have the opposite side we do have the hypotenuse and if this is the opposite, this must be the adjacent. So again, let's look what deals with adjacent and hypotenuse. It's the cosine angle again. So we can use the cosine formula. So the cos of theta is equal to adjacent over hypotenuse. So now we're saying the cos, and we don't know the angle, so theta is going to be x. And the adjacent is 11, and the hypotenuse is 21. And now our big step comes in here. So we want x on its own. So cos, we want to get rid of that. So then we can say x. And since cos is going here, we bring them over here as a cos inverse of 11 over 21. So this is the main big step we're going to have to get. So our answer is going to be this stuff put into a calculator. So shift and the cos button now gives me cos inverse. And again, I'm sorry about the calculator. I'll just have to replace it. And we get 58.41. And of course, that is degrees. And that's a basic introduction to the Sokotoa rules.